Hi, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I'm going to talk about drills and drivers. One of the more common questions that I get uh, on the YouTube channel and people emailing me, what's the difference between a drill, like a regular drill and a hammer drill? Uh, or what's the difference between an impact driver or an impact wrench? Um, and so I thought I would talk a little bit about that today and clear that up. Uh, they definitely have different functions completely and we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, so why don't we just start with a regular drill. This is a regular cordless drill. All I have here is cordless. Probably everybody uses cordless anyway. And then, you know, this is a, uh, a keyless chuck a long time ago. Well, even today, I suppose you can get drills with, uh, with keyed chucks. So it had a little chuck key like that. And, you know, you'd, you, you, would, you would put it in here and that would tighten up your drill bit. But today, they're all, they're all most of them, for hand tools anyway, are keyless chucks. So... Uh, so this is your standard drill. All it does really is drill holes. A lot of them have, will have a clutch on them to, uh, uh, so that you can't o overdrive something or overdrill something. It'll stop if the pressure gets too much. Okay, so let's talk about this clutch function. Um, normally, if you're drilling in screws, screwing in screws, I recommend uh, an impact driver because it's a lot of work for the drill motor to do that on a regular basis. If you have a lot of screws to put in, it's going to put, put this under more load probably than it needs to be put under. I'm sure it still lasts for years, but it's really what an impact is designed for. But if you need to, a specific setting or specific depth, uh, then sometimes this is nice to use. So I've got this set at 16 on the clutch, and I'll show you what it does there. So at 16, I could just keep right on going. It's going to go all the way through. So if, that, if that's too deep, I maybe I'll adjust it down to 11, and you can play with the different... Uh, clutch amounts and give it a try but here's an 11 so it's going to stop right there without me having to worry about it going all the way through and just to show you how it works if I went down to say oh, I don't know a four I wouldn't even get that deep in the same wood not deep at all a little bit more so that's how that that's how the clutch function works on that it stops it at specific depths. If I wanted this flush, instead of choosing 11, you know, I might have chosen a 12. So you would play with that depending on the wood that you're using, depending on whether or not you're going to put a pilot hole in the wood, or if you're just going to go straight through. This is soft wood, it's red wood, so I didn't bother putting a pilot hole. Wouldn't be able to drill through oak like that, of course. But hardwoods have got to have a pilot hole no matter what. But that's the clutch function, that's how that works. So that might come in handy one day. But that's it. There's nothing, nothing complicated about that. Um, talking about this, though, a regular drill. This is another drill. It's also kind of a regular drill, but this is a right angle drill. If I have to drill in a tight space, put a little hole in something that's in a tight space, I don't have a lot of room, you can see that uh, this drill will get me in much tighter space than this drill. If I've got a wall on one side and a wall on the other that I have to drill. So for, for that reason, a lot of people will have a, a right angle drill. It's just kind of convenient. If you don't have a right angle drill though, it's not necessarily the end of the world. They make tools like this that'll go into a drill and it's a right angle fixture. So you can put your bit here, for example, and then turn it. Now you can see that turns the bit and this gets us into an even tighter space. If there's something here in the way, you know, it gets us even into an even tighter space than a right angle drill. And those are pretty handy. If there's anything that you see here today that, that you don't have in your shop or you may want in your shop after seeing it, I'll put links to all these in the description below the video. Okay, so in, in addition to just, or talking about just the basic drill, this is DeWalt's 12 volt drill, or sorry, this is their 20 volt. This is the 12 volt. Smaller, lighter, which is really nice for a lot of, uh, a lot of things that you wanna do. It just won't have the same torque, the same output as something like that. Uh, Milwaukee makes one too. It's nice, although it doesn't stand too well on its own. Um, but it is nice. It's small. It's lightweight. It's compact. It works well. So there's different options for you in terms of drill size. All right, so moving up in, in, in power probably is uh, going with a hammer drill. So a hammer drill can function like a regular drill too. If you look at the top, it's got different settings on it. Uh, this looks like a little hammer, so if I turn it, if I turn this to there, it's going to have the hammer function, and it's got a drill function, and it's got a screw function. 
but the hammer function is what we're talking about. So a hammer drill, basically, if as I'm drilling down, it spins, but as I'm, you can hear that, that, that bump. So as I push down on it, if I have a drill bit in here, it's actually delivering a hammer impact, essentially, behind the drill bit, and that helps you drill through hard things like concrete. So the, the motion of impact for a hammer drill is straight down along the axis of the bit. And that's different than an impact driver or an impact wrench. And that's what this is for. This is for drilling into concrete. You, of course, you can just, you don't have to use the hammer function. You can just use the drill function if you want. And then you're just drilling into regular stuff. And like this, it doesn't have the hammer function. On hammer, <coughs> it's got the hammer function. So that's the difference there. These are nice. Uh, if you only could get one drill, this would be a good drill to get. But they're really heavy. So if you, if you can, it might be nice to get a regular drill before you get this, unless you really, really need to drill uh, into concrete. So the next thing we'll talk about is impact driver. This is an impact driver. You're probably familiar with the, with the end of it here. They're really short and stubby, um, and they've got a socket, like a quarter inch socket, so it's going to hold, it's going to hold a bit. You put a bit in there, and that's all it does. It doesn't, it's not really for drilling holes. It's for, uh, it's for uh, driving things in. Uh, that's different than an impact wrench. This is an impact wrench. An impact wrench has the square drive on it that's made for something like a socket. So if you've got sockets, you would use an impact wrench. So, so these also, you probably notice that um, they have uh, the same impacting type motion or impacting type sound that a hammer drill has, but it's different. If I'm drilling this, for example, and I'm pushing down to drill something, it doesn't impact down along the axis of the bit. It actually impacts in a circular motion. So it's going in a circular motion. So it's driving this way. It's driving this way. So if you're having a hard time getting through something, like you've got some wood that's very hard to drill or very hard to, uh, uh, like a screw that's getting stuck and it doesn't want to keep going, that'll engage the impact function. And the impact function will drive it because it just impacts it one bit at a time. Maybe I'll put the right bit in. We'll get this one. As I get going, it sounds normal. But now you hear the impact function. That impact function is working in a circular direction, different than a hammer drill, circular direction to drive this down that way. And then these also come in all different sizes. Um, this is a 20 volt, a 12 volt. Milwaukee makes a version as well. Um, I do like Milwaukee and DeWalt both. Both their products, I think, are great. But I think DeWalt makes the better um, impact driver. And because if I have to load a bit into a DeWalt, I just push it in here and, and load it, and it's, and, it's, and it's in. And if I want to unload it, it ejects itself. But the Milwaukee is different. If I want to load it, I can't push it in. It doesn't push in. I actually have to lift this collar up and then push it in. They both hold with the same power, but this requires me to do that. And then to take it out, it doesn't have any spring action to release the bit. I have to hold that up and then pull the bit out manually. So obviously, when it comes to impact drivers, I prefer the DeWalt. So moving up from the impact driver, of course, I mentioned already is the impact wrench. Impact wrenches are already ready to accept a socket. So they have a lot more power. Um, if, for example, you didn't want to buy one of these, you have the option of getting an adapter. Let me grab these here. So these are socket adapters. That's a 3 8 drive, and there's a half inch drive. So you can take your standard uh, impact driver, and you can put you know, the socket adapter into it, whatever size you're using, and that'll work that way. Kind of the same, but these don't have nearly the torque of an impact wrench. This is a dedicated machine. So the difference in why you'd want maybe a, a dedicated impact wrench is it has a lot more torque. So if you have to drive a big heavy bolt or you have to tighten a nut like the lug nuts on your car or something heavy duty, then you're going to want to have an impact wrench. This, of course, is a very small one, so it's not for very heavy duty operations. Um, this, of course, is a very big one. So this is for very big operations, and there's pretty much, pretty much nothing this guy can't drive. And once again, you see it spins smoothly until force gets put on it or until resistance gets put on it, and then it starts impacting. You hear the impact noise. Impact, of course, goes the same way in a circular motion. So if you need a lot of torque, you probably want to get a dedicated impact wrench. 
So you just got to remember the difference between, I'm going to put this at an angle so I don't drill into my table, but an impact wrench is when you have a, a lot of really heavy stuff to drill. There's just a lot more torque here for something like that. And you see that buried that. Even though it's a 12 volt, it put this in no problem. I want to show you another Milwaukee tool that they came out with not too long ago. This is a pretty cool little kit. This has basically got, has a drill. It's a, it's a 12 volt system. It has a drill, but it has a lot of other chucks that go on it as well. So you can just lift this collar up here and that comes right off. And then you can put this on. And then it goes from being a drill to being uh, an impact driver. That's kind of cool. And there's another function that it has. You can put this on. You get it on partway and then you lift the collar and then it goes on the rest of the way. This is an offset uh, socket or an offset driver. The advantage of something like this is that if you if you had, let's say you have to drill a screw into something and you get very close to the edge. So like if I had my top here and I had to put a screw right here, this gets you very close to the edge this way, very close up here. Whereas if you had a traditional, a traditional one, this is much, much more room, you know, get, it's much further away uh, from the edge of the board. Hopefully that makes sense. But this, it's an offset driver which gets you closer to an inside corner. And lastly, it has a right angle attachment. So if you're drilling, you can, and you can put these in at any angle that you want. I can put it in this way, but that's an offset. That's a right angle. So it works just like the right angle drill where there's not much space here before that goes down to the drill. But that's kind of cool. So this one kit comes with two batteries. It comes with all four uh, chucks that you see here and a handy little bag. So I bought two of these. We do use these a lot in the shop and, and I use uh, one inside the house. I just think that's convenient because it has everything that I need. And if you need something small and compact that you can take with you everywhere or use inside or outside, that's not a bad option. So the last one I'm gonna show you is kind of a unique or a specialty drill. This is a, this is a Metabo. It's a, it actually will function as a regular drill, but it also functions as a tapping drill. So in the tapping function, if you put pressure here, it drives forward. But if I let go of the pressure, it drives in reverse. So forward and reverse, and then forward and reverse. That's kind of cool. So the reason for something like that is if you're going to tap. And we do a lot of cool projects where we tap wood. So that may be something you want to do too. And I'll show you real quick how that works. You have to drill with the appropriate size. If you don't know what the appropriate size is, there's listings all over the internet. This is a 5 16 inch hole. And with that, I'm going to use a 3 8 inch tap. Let me set this out of the way. So these taps are really cool. I'm going to put a link to these in case you ever want to tap wood. These have a hex end, so they're not really like metal taps. Threads are a little bit deeper, and they're just they're great for tapping wood. You can put bolts right into it after that, too. And so if I push down, it's going to go forward. And then if I pull back, or I don't have to go in reverse, it's not a drill. If I pull back up, it's going to come out. It's going to go that way, and I push forward. Again, it goes in. So it's kind of a neat thing. And then, of course, uh, metal or you know any screw will just go right into the thread that we just tapped. So you don't have to have this drill to do that same operation I'm going to show you here. The, um, it'll work just fine with a regular drill. But you have to go in one way and then out the other. So you got to go forward in and then put it in reverse to come out. All right, so we'll drill the, the hole. It works a little bit better if you can drill the hole on your drill press because it's a nice, neat, perfectly perpendicular hole. So here, I'm going to be in forward mode going down. And then I'll put it in reverse mode to come up. So kind of like that. This is better if you're tapping a lot of metal screws uh, or you know, screws into metal, uh, you're tapping metal because it's, it's just very fast. You don't have to worry about dealing with the trigger. You just go push in, pull out, and it does the tapping for you. It goes in reverse automatically. 
but works exactly the same with the drill. So these are pretty cool. Um, if you need to get a set of these for any reason, I'll put a link to those in the description below. All the common sizes, they're just, they're great. Mm -hmm.